Now, the rest of the story. Welcome back to the rest of the story. Well, this video is kind of to give you a representation of what it's like to haul grain in basically winter conditions, because that's what we're dealing with. Single digits and in the teens and as far as temps go, and dealing with snow and frozen ground and trying to keep traction pulling 500 bushels of corn up and down field roads, out my driveway, and up and down the highway, which the highway really doesn't change much other than the fact that you're throwing salt and everything all over your equipment, which is kind of a gut check to me. I don't really don't like running our equipment up and down the road in the salt, just in general. But it must be done. This wagon, it needs to be washed. Everything we have really needs to be washed off really well. Uh, they're actually, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was just reading earlier that they're, that they're calling for a a neutral winter. Does anybody have any idea what a neutral winter is? And it's the first time I've ever really heard that term before. So is it just, just what, freezing temps, 30 degrees and you know, a couple dustings throughout the winter or, or what, but so the first and foremost thing you're probably going to see here is I'm having a hard time getting traction with 76. I do have plenty of weight on it. I'm actually thinking about maybe putting another set of rear weights on the back rims, uh, mainly just for more traction, um, in the winter plus in the summer hauling hay. We'll get into that topic later on. So you're going to see we're going downhill from here the second we left those gates. And watching your gear, watching your, your shifting, your throttle, your engaging and disengaging, your differential, plus your front wheel drive or mechanical front wheel drive, uh, all comes into play here because traction is about 10% 10, 10 above zero. So you got to be really careful with how fast you're actually going and be aware of how much weight is trying to push you down the hill. The field road right here is more rough than anything just because we actually rutted it up when we first started harvesting this farm, let's say two weeks ago. Uh, we were actually cutting some pretty awesome ruts, throwing mud, slinging mud. I had a pretty good trail of mud going up the highway uh, to get out of here, but man, times can really change in what, two weeks? And that's really the truth of it, too. It really seems like we've been harvesting for a very long time, but we really haven't been running that long. I can't even remember when we really started, if it was, what, the last week, the second to last week in October. And uh, this video was the end of the second week of, our, of November. So it seems like we've been harvesting forever, but honestly, not really. And there you go. Uh, the right rear tire is your first indication of what this wild fun ride down my driveway is going to be like. Uh, it's pretty dangerous. Um, yeah, even for me. Uh, I did go through and salt my driveway. You can see, I think you can kind of see that. I went through and I salted down the tire track, so at least I had some you know, traction going down the driveway to a certain degree. The only problem is I didn't salt high enough up the driveway because you can see right above my right rear view mirror uh, where the the salt really takes, is taking away the, the ice. But I'm sliding down the field driveway there and I am in, have the differential lock on. I have the front wheel assist locked in, mechanical front wheel drive locked in, and I'm actually going about fifth gear. Now the tricky thing is you got to be lined up just right going down the driveway here because I'm going to break traction. I already am. We're starting to slide. And when my front tires hit the salt, we're good. Just like that. It doesn't seem like much, but I pretty much was going into a controlled slide going down my driveway right there. I know somebody's going to have to speak up and say I'm insane that I should go through and salt the rest of my driveway, yada, 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 yada. I used all the salt that I had on hand, and we were running on a time limit as far as the amount of time we had to go to really, phone going off, um, to get off what we had planned for that day. And to be honest with you, I really didn't feel like I was in that much danger. I mean, I know I'm crazy, but 
I'm not stupid. If I really thought I was going to be in some serious danger, or honestly, if it was anybody else, I probably would have went ahead and went and bought some more salt and ran back home. I would have lost some time, and somebody's going to, once again, chirp up and say, well, lost time is better than somebody getting injured. Well, yeah, that's true, but I'd be that somebody, and I'm very confident in my abilities. Not trying to sound arrogant there, but... Um, if I thought I was in danger, I'd have done something about it. But so this is pretty textbook as far as going up and down the highway. Start off about twelfth gear in a nineteen speed power shift, and gradually one gear at a time, let the engine rev back up after shifting up to each gear, getting up to nineteenth gear. And as we're going up this highway, because it is a slow, steady upward drive. Anybody that's been in this area, especially the people that have been here for the farm day, know exactly what I'm talking about. And we're going to get just past my neighbor's driveway and I'll have to drop it down to 18th. And I've actually been doing really well as far as getting up this highway without having to shift from 18th to 17th. Uh, because when you go from 18 to 17, 17 to 18, there's our old trucker uh, on the left there I was just waving to. Um... What happens is, is that in the transmission, it's got to do a lot more uh, shifting of the gears, and it really jerks the tractor, and I really do not like to do that. So we just passed my neighbor's driveway, and I don't know if I'm going to yeah, see. I'm getting ready to shift. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it or not. And yeah, definitely slowing down. Yeah, uh, you can't see it, but I just shifted down right there from 19th to 18th. And the 76 has been doing a really good job at being able to pull this hill without having to shift down more than once. And then as soon as we start to level out, we get about 2,000 RPMs again. I'll shift it back up to 19th. Say, I usually don't try to pull the tractor down too overly low as far as engine RPMs. Once we get down about 1,400, 1,500 um, just depends on how the tractor is responding. It really depends on when I decide to shift, but it's usually before I hit 1,400 RPMs. So I don't really like to get down to much below that and actually have to start shifting again. Seems like you lose too much, too much your uh, oh, brain fart, uh, your horsepower. It just seems like it, the tractor really lugs from there on up when you're you run the engine down too far. So. This is what harvest has actually been like for at least, I'd say, half of harvest. If you look to your left and you look to your right, snow, winter conditions. Uh, well, I don't, really don't think we've had much, like, decent, like, actual harvest weather, what I'd call harvest weather, which is blue sky, partly cloudy, sunny, sweatshirt weather. Uh, we got done with soybean harvest and those kind of conditions, but pretty much all of corn harvest. I think I had a sweatshirt for one day, quite literally one day of corn harvest. Otherwise, I've been wearing my winter clothes, overalls, insulation, heavy winter coat, and I'd rather be overdressed than underdressed because if something breaks and for how much I actually stand outside of the tractor unloading these loads, uh, it keeps me warm. I don't really get carried away going back into the tractor once I start the auger and everything because I like to be right there just in case something blows up or breaks. Uh, the, the shear pin on the auger is actually our biggest issue. It's had its two breaks, two shears for the season, and I actually, right or wrong, uh, the shear bolt that I put back in it is actually a grade 8. I've been putting in grade 5s. and. I actually took one of the spare bolts from when we were building the, the grain bin and put that in there. So we're gonna see how long that one lasts. Uh, I think the biggest reason I think they break, honestly, is just the vibration. Um, the little bit of maybe movement that it has when, when you're running it without any grain running through the auger because it does have a subtle vibration uh, when the auger is running empty. I think it just works on those bolts. So I do know the gearbox on our auger is getting bad going out, and we are going to be addressing that next year. No, I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing it this fall because we are on quite literally the tail end of using that grain auger. Uh, we didn't put any corn in our upper farm this year. 
just because we have plenty of storage on the farm here and it's a lot easier getting the semi in and out of our buildings at home than hauling the truck, the tractor, auger, clear up to the other farm for 2,000 bushels. It just wasn't worth it. So once again, we got that spreader, we got that ripper in the background. Haven't had a chance to use them yet. They're calling for warmer weather here, but the problem is it's turning into mud. As weird as it is and as odd as it sounds to hear me say that, I almost would prefer if it stayed cold out and we could actually go ahead and get all the corn out of the field and then worry about dealing with mud. But I guess that's just me. And one last thing, trouble I've been having going up through here is the ground is hard. Pulling this load of corn up around uphill, it's a gradual incline. Uh, with frozen ground, I'm spinning all four tires, the 76, to get the wagon up in position that I need it to be to unload it. So, oh well, I think I've burned off more tread in the last two days than I have basically all this year running up and down the highway. So, food for thought. And that is the rest of the story, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you next time.